Good morning, this is Howie, and I'm here to help you win with money. Today's a new day, and today's a special day. Today is Tuesday, November 3rd. It is election day. For those of you who didn't do early voting, hopefully you have a chance to go and vote today. So I wanted to cover a couple things today on our special election day coverage. I wanted to show you the markets are up, or at least the futures are up, and it's looking really good. And there is a prediction that if there's a clear winner, regardless who it is, the markets will go up. So it doesn't matter who wins. However, if there's a contested um, election and you have to go through all the courts and everybody is counting sort of like the hanging chad and, and all this stuff about, well, which votes are, are valid or not, that can bring uncertainty and the markets don't like that. So what the market like is, doesn't matter who wins, markets will generally trend up. Now, one candidate may be better than the other from it comes to long-term taxes and, and stuff like that, but I'm not going to get into that. But I want to show you something even more interesting. So stay tuned for this one because I'm going to talk about teledocs. For those of you who don't know, look at this article. Kathy Woods increased teledocs holding across the ARC EFT. She is a portfolio manager. She is one of the biggest Tesla bulls. I believe she was calling for a 5,000 share price maybe even a year ago or even longer than that. But I want to show you this. This article talks about how the mutual fund added more shares. Here you go on Thursday and Friday. And it's big news. Right? They're, they're adding more shares of this. And it talks about the portfolio sizing. It's becoming a fairly uh, large holdings in the portfolio. And why is this important? Teladocs is one of these work from home companies that everybody's been reading about. Earnings was decent. They have a merger, right? They're growing. So let's take a quick look at the charts. Here's Teladocs, definitely not a cheap company. Look at the year to date. You see this? I mean, this is this is big move since the beginning of the year. And look at the March. You're like, well, where's the dip? And if I may say so myself, it is right here. While the rest of the world drop, this thing is taking off. So why is this important? Why am I telling you this? Well, let's take a quick look. For those of you who follow my channel, you guys know I use E-Trade. So I wanted to show you something. It is so easy to just broadcast on the news. What is not easy is someone's doing this showing you a holding and when I purchased Teladocs. So you see this? This is a real portfolio, not fake, right? I didn't edit uh, the web browser to show you this. And I'm going to show that to you because look, there's real data back here. Look, this company, I've been buying shares since 2000. And look, who would do this and fake a website just to please a YouTube audience? So you guys decide, so you see that, this is real data. And so why am I invested in this? Well, I wanna show you, there's a lot of good things. Teladoc's growth is it's still gaining. And another article from The Fool here, they like it, you know, rapid growth. This company is not profitable. And what you have to realize is investing not not every good investment requires a profit. I know it sounds weird to say that coming from a dividend investor like myself, but sometimes you invest and grow because those companies will pour all their energy and money into expanding their business, acquiring new customers, and expanding their market share. So when that happens, it is possible that you may not show a profit for many years. And that is what Amazon did. And I'm not saying every company that does that will become the next Amazon. Many companies fail as they're growing and they don't have a way to make a profit. They will fail. Will they become the 800 pound gorilla? Or will another company come in and steal all the market shares? Sort of like how Zoom can do that and then beat out WebEx. WebEx is actually owned by Cisco and Microsoft Teams, right? They're not the biggest player. And so, 
always keep an eye on some of these smaller disruptors in the industry and then we'll see what happens so i wanted to show you because this company has a lot of growth and i wanted to show you a couple things let's punch in some numbers in my trusty spreadsheet you guys know i love spreadsheets i'm going to show you is it a good investment so give me some chance i'm going to plug in some numbers here let's start with market price okay i got that in let's do the gains okay got that in total percentage there you go and so far so good you see my map is matching what the brokerage company is showing so that's good so we can easily say hey let's just assume this is two years right and actually let's just be generous let's call it I've been holding this for three years and this is 20 years because if you look at the first time I bought in now I've been buying you see this I've been buying ten twenty dollars very little sometimes five dollars a week in this thing so I didn't do a one lump sum thing but I'm going to show you some quick math to figure out the uh, compounding annual growth rate so hang on a second so this is always the I always worry about this because I can get this wrong divided by this now we want to do uh, one divided by the number of years so in this case is 20 let me just check the math real quick I didn't even notice that I I was looking at the number of years 20 but I was trying to reference the cell huh that was so funny okay that's better so what does this mean yeah that looked like it's working if I did 10 years let me just check real quick yeah that's about right that looks really good so what this mean is has this been a good investment right when you look at these numbers they look really great but you got to always divide it by how long you've been holding it now the weird thing is I used the first date but if you can see technically speaking only 90 right only $30 was invested on that first year and if you scroll down look I've been I spent a couple years accumulating it you see that a couple years accumulating it the both the bulk of my growth you see you can look at the percentages here four five hundred percent five hundred percent you see so the big percentages was a right right here 900 percent you see that so you can see the bulk of it and so anyway it's a good way just to see how well your uh, return is so here I need did one purchase I may add more in the future but I only have thirteen dollars not much you can't even buy a fraction of a share well I guess you could but um, I wanted to show you and the last thing is let's compare this with let me make sure this is right so according to this look the true annualized return for the S&P during the same period according to this hang on a second was 6.01 and if you change it to 2018 just to get a uh, look at that 11.95 whoops the average for the market so if you talk about you want to beat the market depending on your time frame here's a good way to do it so I like to use this now let me just back up and say something for those of you who watch my channel know that I talk a lot about options and I don't really talk about other stuff now I use a blended strategy and what that means is I don't just follow one single strategy and that's it now I love options and I do many videos on it but you can see something like this it's great returns you're beating the market and I have a strategy where I'm still picking stock I like picking stock now is that a really good strategy well mathematically most people are horrible at picking stock including myself so what do I do I am a typical indexer I index into the S&P 500 so that I get the annual right average rate of return from the S&P 500 
There's nothing fancy about that. I don't need to outperform the market. So I'll say that again. If you're an indexer, you don't need to outperform. These portfolio and most people who have portfolios like this, they're just randomly, right? You, you, you just pick stuff and if they win or lose, it's okay. Because if 90% of your portfolio is in an index, then these portfolios don't need to outperform, right? Sure, they may add drag if they're underperforming, or they may boost your performance by uh, you know a fraction of a percentage point to increase it. And that's my go. My options trading should only add a slight advantage, whether it's five or ten percent extra per year. That will give me a slight advantage. And then when you add that into my S and P five hundred strategy, that will sort of right mirror the market then you got a minus anything that i underperform with because i don't always overperform sometimes i'm i am buying stuff like cannabis and and crispr and i'm also looking at new new technology and eventually i may get into spat and you know everything else right evs and stuff like that but part of investing is picking out the winners before everybody else does and if you go to seeking alpha here you see some these are people who write articles. I'm not sure if you can only own one stock, this is the one I would buy. That's like saying you can only bet on one horse and you better be right. And I'm not sure if that's really a good way to teach people how to invest. But again, I get their point. I'm not gonna say it's a bad investment. Look, you can see what other people are writing about. But what I wanted to show you this particular article over here. I mean, they beat earnings, but look at this one. Ultra bullish. Do you see this number here? 28.5 compounding annual growth rate for 20 years. You see that? So that's crazy. Will this thing ever pan out? So there are a lot of people who love this stock. Is it too late? Well, I'm not going to say it is or it isn't, but it's like Amazon or like Tesla in the first four, five, six shares when people are telling you to buy it and no one did, it is high risk. But as the shares move up, what happened is as more people buy it, sometimes you get this herd mentality to continue, to continually keep on pushing the share price up. So if you're going to be in that position, why not get in a little bit earlier than the rest? Then you don't need to put in a bulk of your money, as you can see what I did. Good morning, this is Howie, and I'm here to help you with money. And today I have to apologize. I made a mistake in one of my videos. It was the one when I did with Carrie Wood with Art. And I showed Teladocs. But unfortunately, I didn't even show the right underlying in my portfolio because I, I didn't even realize it was my mistake. I get the ticker symbols mixed up between Teladocs and DocuSign. So that was my fault. Okay, so here's the actual thing that I wanted to show you. It was still 2008. Here's the date. I got in at $78. You see the market price is here. I don't know why this has such a big lag. The brokerage account is definitely not showing real-time data because I see over $200 a share right now. So there is some lag between my brokerage account. But this is what it is. Um... Just want to let you know, I still got in early, early enough, made over, you know, 150% return. So here it goes again. You can see it. I put in no more than $4,000. I got 50 shares. It's worth over 200 and something dollars today. You can see that. And nothing exciting when you go into the tax lot details, just more detail of the trade and the transaction. So you can see it, real data. I just used the wrong one and I showed you the wrong security before. So again, I'm surprised no one commented. I would have uh, created a video to fix that much sooner, but thanks again. And I wanted to show you that I did get in and I'm a big believer in it. I'm a big believer in DocuSign also, but that wasn't the purpose of the video where I only put in a few thousand bucks and again I can let it sit there and ride for the next 5 10 or 20 years hope you enjoy this video I hope that uh, you guys are following 
Kathy Woods that you guys are following these ETFs from ART. But anyway, hope you have a profitable trading day. As always, please like, hit, hit like, 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 give me a thumbs up. If you want to win with money, you got you to gotta follow, you got you to gotta do what I'm doing, you got to do what other people are teaching. Money concepts work when you apply it. We're here to teach you how to win with money. I'm here to share what I do, my knowledge. Like I said, let's do this together. Let's do this $1 at a time. And over time, you're going to make money. You're going you're gonna to make enough, and you're going to see that it, this is doable. You don't need a crystal ball. It's not even about luck. Indexing is not even about luck. I teach this all the time. You know, it's the most simplest thing. I'm not trying to be a portfolio manager, and I'm not trying to run a mutual fund. But you can do this, and anyone can do this. So follow me. I have a lot more original content coming out. I didn't, I didn't expect to do a whole video on my big gainers, but I want to show you that while everybody in the world is saying, yes, yes, this lady is awesome or this mutual fund is awesome, hey, you got to get in and buy into these things early. And that's what I did. I wanted to show you guys that I already own this. I own some other stuff um, that are you know, popping up. And so I'm excited about what the future holds. The next 10 years may be exciting. There's going to be more Teslas on our more Tesla like investments and more Amazon like investments. So you got to follow the market and see what, what next big winner is going to come. Anyway, I got to run, have a good day. And again, go and vote and let's have a profitable trading week. Bye bye.